Welcome back to What's on My Needles, and this week I'm going to be working on this little guy. Uh, so this is a peacock, and on the inside it has an Olympic flame. So this is an Olympic year, so currently it's 2021 if you're watching this way in the future. Uh, and due to COVID, um, it, the Olympics turned to this year rather than last year. Uh, so this little guy actually was designed a year ago and then when everything happened, I just didn't make the five that I normally make before they go up on, on my Etsy shop. So currently there's still only one. Um, so there may be a link in the description to buy one. There may not be. It depends on how many I have available at the time of uploading the video. So I'm going to pop out both sides so it's a bit easier to see. So the little um, peacock has a couple extra things that make it a bit more challenging. So the first one is the tail. Um, so this is actually done in a intarsia work. So it's it's color work, but it's not stranded color work. It's block color work, if that makes sense. So I'm only working one color at a time, but it's only across the number of stitches in each little section. And it's worked from the center point back, back here, up and around to the center point on the back. And that's where we're actually gonna start today. So next time will be the flames and then how to connect them into the body or into the side for the flames. And then part three will be the body, including how to connect the tail to the body. So there's lots of little things to happen first and then we'll get into the big part. Uh, so let me get set up. I'm gonna try to do some of this on a white background. I might have to switch backgrounds depending on how well a white critter on a white background looks or is visible. So give me a second to set up and I will be right back. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe at the social media platforms listed below. And if you like this video, please remember to leave a comment. So the first color I'm going to work with is blue. I'm just going to loop the yarn around the needle and knit, and then do a lifted increase, a plain stitch, a lifted right increase, so that is an increase on the stitch to the left, and then knit the stitch that I was right below. So there's the first five, and then the next color is yellow. Now for anyone who's going, that's going to be a lot of colors of yarn all together and isn't that going to get so knotted up? Yes, yes it is. Um, I am not the best at yarn management. I end up untangling this all the time and I just have kind of gotten used to that. So I know there are better ways to do it. I've just chosen not to deal with them. But part of how I deal with it is I do have these little tiny balls rather than having a big ball of each color. Now I do happen to know from the last time that I did this pattern that I do in fact have to be a little careful with how I distribute the stitches at this point because I'm no longer going all the way around in a circle. I will actually be working in rows, but working in those rows does mean that I need to move the stitches around. So I'm, I am working only in five eighths of a circle 
rather than a full circle. So I, I choose to do that by doing two, one, and then another two. So as soon as I'm done with the red section, it'll be a little bit more clear of what I'm talking about. So there is the first row of the intarsia and so I've got the three uh, three eighths of the circle so the nine stitches that I'm not using down here and then I've got five blue five yellow five black five green and five red um, at this point I will not be increasing every other round I will be increasing every four rounds and then there's some decreases so let me get up to that point and I will show you what's going on. So as stated before, I am not the best at yarn management. Um, I will end up untangling all of that as I go over the next several rounds. But this is where I go from normal intarsia. So what I've been doing is wrapping the two colors around each other each time that I come to a color join. So that's what it looks like from the back. That's what it looks like from the front. So you can't really see it from the front. And now I'm going to stop wrapping them around each other, which actually makes the yarn management a lot easier, but that's not why I'm doing it. So what I've been doing is just working out in a, in a circle. I've just been increasing two, two stitches per every section, oh, every four rows, rather than one, se one stitch every section, every other row. So the ratio works out the same. It's just being done in a different way to make it more symmetrical. So instead, so normally I would be picking up the black and wrapping it over the green to work. This time I'm going to make sure that the green is off to the side before I pick up the black to work it. And this is causing, if I look on the original, this first line here where they're not connected, where they're not connected because their turning point is way out here. And I'm here. So I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but hopefully it will in a little bit. Um, I did end up switching out my black yarn because I realized on the return row that it was actually the wrong yarn. That is one of the biggest downsides of the number of black balls of yarn in my house is I have a hard time telling which ball is the correct ball for each project. So again, I'm just moving the yellow off to the side and then I'm going to pick up the blue and work with the blue. And I'll end up unbra or untangling all of that mess below me soon enough. That one doesn't need to be in there. So at this point, it's time to start making little peaks in the feathers. I'm going to go ahead and do an SSK, knit one, and then knit two together, and knit one. And then repeat the whole thing over and over again. So I've got this decrease round and then one more decrease round of a central double decrease. So I'm to make three stitches. So I'm going to take these three stitches the next round and turn them into one. And then I'm going to do that again to turn it into one to turn it. So that's where I'm at. And that's kind of how this side works. 
So I'll be right back when it's time for me to start increasing stitches again for the other side. If you would like to help fund this channel, please find me on Patreon at the link listed below. So I have started to increase again and it's time for me to do the next little bit of increasing. So unlike the decreasing where I was actively pushing stitches together and it was all within that one side, I'm actually using the slip stitches on either side to be where I pick up the new stitches. And in that way I'm able to make a very neat edge to my peacock feathers without having to do a whole lot of seaming after the fact. And I'm so I've already done it on one side on the purl side of the inside side. And then on this row, I'm literally just dipping into that slip stitch and pulling it through. And I'm going to do that all the way out until I'm back at seven stitches in a couple more rows. And then I will be starting to decrease to get back down to the center. Um, but this will be it for this video. And next time I will show you how I work on the flames and then how I get the flames connected to the peacock. So, and I will see you next time for what's on my needles.